Hi, I'm Donald McIntyre, founder of Etherplan. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Ethereum Classic Community Dynamics and my updated price predictions. The first thing I, I wanted to talk about is the, the Ethereum Classic ecosystem as part of the community. The ecosystem, as, as we know, has at the core, it has ETC Labs that is owned by BFG and, and, and they uh, maintain the, the node called Core Geth, which, it, which has 90% share in Ethereum Classic. Then you have the ETC Cooperative, the, the, the firm that supports that entity's grayscale, and they, they manage and maintain Hyperledger Base, which is the other important node in, in Ethereum Classic, uh, and they have 5% share. Um, IOHK had Mantis with 5% or less a share, uh, but because their treasury proposal was rejected, they decided to leave uh, Ethereum Classic. So we have um, Corgeth and Hyperledger Besu and, and these groups who are supporting Ethereum Classic through the maintenance of the nodes. Uh, then, then we have um, the, the mining pools and miners, more than 25 uh, uh, ter terahashes per, per second in, in mining and, and they are part of the community. Uh, many exchanges support Ethereum Classic. I think it's more than 30 exchanges worldwide, including Binance, the largest one, Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, etc. OK Coin, OKX, uh, and then um, then we have many many wallet uh, operators that that support Ethereum Classic, from Exodus to Coinbase Wallet, uh, Coinbase, the, the wallet service and the retail service. Um, and uh, MetaMask, uh, Trust Wallet, all the big wallets in the world support Ethereum Classic. And then we have the ETC Army. The ETC Army are many volunteers like me that we participate on social media. We, are, we invest in Ethereum Classic many times and um, we are on Twitter, Discord, Telegram, Facebook, etc. And we we are we we form opinion. We analyze new projects. Um, we we either support or criticize uh, new proposals for Ethereum Classic and the ECIP process. So it's a it's a very key uh, com uh, and critical component of the ecosystem. And then we have more passive uh, participants who are worldwide users and investors who are in the millions. Now Ethereum Classic has 131 million coins issued the, the the maximum amount is going to be 210 million and um, and there's millions of, of, of people around the world who own uh, ethereum classic um, it's important I the, the upcoming events before I talk about the community uh, internal dynamics is um, the the fifth winning the 20 percent discount in block rewards is going to happen more or less in April it's 800,000 blocks away from today. So that's going to happen in, in April and, and um, the block rewards are going to go down from 3.2 per block to 2.56. The other critical or upcoming event that is very important is, is that SHA-3 is already uh, integrated in Hyperledger Besu and it's in the process of being integrated in Core Geth. Um, it is, there's, there's still debate whether it's going to be fine, final um, and implemented in Ethereum Classic as, as the mining algorithm or the hashing algorithm, <clears throat> but um, I think it's going to happen. The, I think it's also rational that we are delaying it uh, because Ethereum, Ethereum 1 has not migrated to Ethereum 2, so I think it makes sense to, to stay with ETC hash, the current mining algorithm or hashing algorithm, uh, so that when Ethereum migrates or merges into the proof of stake uh, system, then all those miners can easily come to Ethereum Classic. And then after that, we can continue debating and see when uh, a time is set to migrate to SHA-3. I think, it, uh, I personally think that we are going to migrate just because it, it, it's such a superior hashing algorithm uh, and, and would be a real upgrade to, to Ethereum Classic. And um, the other event that I mentioned that is very important in the near future is the migration from Ethereum 1 to Ethereum 2, because that means that in the proof of work layer, 
or in the list of proof of work chains, Ethereum 1 is going to go, go away. So Ethereum Classic is going to be from 6th to, to 5th um, largest proof of work blockchains in the world. So that's a very important external event, but it modifies the position or it, it, it influences the position in the market of Ethereum Classic. So it's a critical, it's a critical event. In terms of community dynamics, what I wanted to say is that um, some, some participants who are building projects on Ethereum Classic and FT projects, um, swaps, swap systems and, and uh, markets and FT markets, etc. Sometimes they find themselves that they, they would like to have more support from both the ETC army, the core community, the, the developers, uh, the, the Ethereum Classic Twitter account and social media presence. The thing is that we, we don't have to assume that Ethereum Classic is a unicorn kind of um, community like Ethereum or Solana or, or Cardano where everybody's welcome and, and, and we're open-minded and, and we accept any new debates and changes uh, regardless whether they fit the philosophy or not. That is not Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is not a unicorn community. Uh, that is open-minded and welcoming of everybody just just because we want to conform socially. Ethereum Classic is a technical system, it's a, it's a blockchain, and it's very extremist in its philosophy. It's You have the banking system in the spectrum, you have the banking system, which is the least secure system that we can have for finance, um, and, 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 and monetary uh, policies, etc. In the middle, you would, I could say that the proof of stake systems are similar to the banking system, uh, but, um, and they're going to be even managed by banks in the future, uh, but they're, they're more scalable and they have some security um, features that the banking system doesn't have. For example, they are distributed, they can be international and, and, and stuff like that. And then we have the most extreme position, which are blockchains like Ethereum Classic, uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin or, or, or Litecoin and those chains, which are proof of work, fully replicated globally. They're totally decentralized. There's no way you can reverse those chains. There's no way um, they, they are anonymous and, and people can join and leave chains in any, anywhere in the world. So it's a very extreme value proposition in terms of security. So we're not communities that uh, are unicorns and we're welcoming of everything and welcoming of new ideas and willing to innovate and change things and break things and move fast and stuff like that. We are communities that are cypherpunk. We are very, uh, very strong and um, firm in our principles. And the, the highest priority is to preserve the security of the chains. So we're, we, being cypherpunks, we are not looking to conform or to be okay with a community or stuff like that. We are looking to only accept uh, changes in the future um, and upgrades that are that totally fit uh, very very well into the, the, the security philosophy of Ethereum Classic. This means that because open communities and unicorn communities are very open and and willing to debate uh, uh, any change, for example, moving Ethereum from from, Ethereum, from proof of work to proof of stake, which is a huge mistake. Uh, we the Ethereum Classic and the ETC Army is more aggressive, and uh, we act more like an immune system. So usually, any new idea or or or, or project or or proposal for the ECIP process is going to be rejected uh, unless it is proven that that it absolutely fits with the philosophy so it's not a welcoming um, kind of community like not welcome it's very welcoming because we are we are all participating and support each other etc but we're not welcoming uh, in the sense that we want to conform socially we we want to to create for the future an extremely uh, secure blockchain with cypherpunk values and 95 percent of the population of the world does not understand that and they're always going to uh, have these dreams of having being in the community 
a blockchain is not about the community and the social layer a blockchain and conformity with the social layer a blockchain is about security and it has to work the same way in time and space um, it has to work the same way today and in a hundred years a smart contract cannot break in a hundred years it has to be there and it has to be working the accounts and the balances etc only people with the private keys can can manage those keys so it's it's a very extreme philosophy of security and in terms of space it has to work the same way in the north pole in the southern pole in brazil in the united states in china in north korea in cuba in any place regardless of what is their local situation if there's war if there's social unrest in afghanistan for example ethereum classic has to work in the same way and it has to provide that guarantee and the only way to do that is to be very extreme in terms of our philosophy of security so that is associated uh, with a with a community that is not going to be absolutely supportive of everything and uh, and the other thing also is that ethereum classic is not a corporation it's not like ethereum ethereum that has a foundation and from there it dictates uh, to the rest of the community. Um, Ethereum Classic or, or Cardano, where you have Charles Hoskinson or IHK, that from there they dictate the direction to the rest of the community. Uh, the same happens with Sol and Zcash, and etc. Zcash has a treasury, they have a corporation and a foundation that they dictate to the rest of the community what's going to happen. And because of these biases that the majority of people have, which are to be more moderate and be more conformist with the world and, and, and stuff like that, and with regulators. Uh, Zcash, an example is that they are, the, this entity that controls Zcash has proposed to move from proof of work to proof of stake, which is, which is an aberration in, a block, in, in the blockchain industry. Proof of, proof of stake systems, yes, they're more scalable, a little bit more secure than the banking system, but they're much less secure in the future. HSBC, JP Morgan, Citibank, Bank of America, the Bank of China, they're all going to be stakers in these systems. And they're going to be fully politicized and they're going to be controls and they're going to be reversals and freezing accounts, etc. Because that's what these entities uh, seek. You know, control, uh, increase their earnings. Um, a, a proof of work blockchain fully replicated with a fixed monetary policy like Ethereum Classic gets rid of, of all of that and it's absolutely truly secure for anybody in the world uh, to use so this is this is a dynamic that that is important i see a lot of people that are claiming and and demanding to others um to 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 support them uh, or 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 that they should do this they should do uh, uh, do that etc because we're not a corporation and centrally controlled uh, each one of us, including me with Etherplan and my participation in the ETC Army, we are uh, volunteers and I'm, I, nobody's my boss in Ethereum. Ethereum Classic doesn't have a CEO, a, a, a marketing uh, person, a, a finance person, operations person. No, we're all um, volunteers. So um, it is futile to try to expect um, the, the whole ETC army and the community at large to behave in certain ways, especially in certain ways that are socially conformist or pleasing uh, or, or provide comfort in terms of a community. Ethereum Classic is not about the community, it's about the system. And this is why it's going to be so valuable in the future. I hope I, I um, explained that part. Um, the second point that I wanted to say re related to the community is what's happening with Ethereum the, the ETH Classic account, it has nearly 600,000 uh, followers. Well, uh, the history of that account is that it was created in July of 2016 by IOHK. At that, at that time, IOHK was also participating in Ethereum Classic and they, had the, and they launched the Mantis uh, client. And they also proposed a treasury and all those things and they were rejected. So they left in 2017, I think. Um, they left, I mean, this year they left again and it's like the third time that they leave. The thing is that the account itself was opened by OHK and they have the ID and password. Apparently they lost it, but um, they, they, in any case, they, they are the owners of that account uh, because they just opened it at the time and it became the, the, the main social media account of Ethereum Classic. Um, the community manager at IOHK 
was uh, Kevin Lord and Kevin Lord has been managing that account very well. Even when he worked at IOHK, he was very neutral, promoting everything and informing the world about everything about the Ethereum Classic. Then Kevin Lord moved from IOHK when IOHK left, moved to the ETC cooperative. Uh, but he kept his credentials through TweetDeck. So he doesn't have the main credentials, but he has a user credential so he can still use the account and tweet and stuff like that. And he has done uh, an excellent job uh, ever since I follow that account. I mean, it's incredible how balanced and pro Ethereum Classic it is. And he has done a, an excellent job. He works now at the community manager of ETC Cooperative and he does other stuff there. But this this is his volunteer work. And he, he has permission by IOHK to continue managing the F Classic account. It's a very important account. Uh, but again, he's a, he's a volunteer. He's doing it because, because um, that's how the events uh, yeah, almost occurred. Uh, and, he, and I think he has done an excellent job this year in particular. Maybe it's, it's been more silent in the last few months uh, because Kevin has gone through family, a family yeah, almost crisis um, uh, a few months ago. And, and also recently he was in a, in a car crash and he, he was... I think he was in a hospital. He tweeted about this. Um, so, so he he had a couple of problems this year, but I think that he has been an amazing manager of this account and a community manager in general. Um, so that's the situation. The account still belongs to IOHK. I think they should transfer it to Kevin directly, and IOHK should go away from that account, uh, and Kevin should continue to manage that account. He, he has done an incredible job. The next topic is what are the ETC Cooperative and Bob Summerwill doing for Ethereum Classic? But this is this is a very interesting topic for me. Um, the, the ETC Cooperative is doing extremely important work for Ethereum Classic and Bob is doing extremely important work. I think he has managed the ETC Cooperative very well. Uh, the ATC Cooperative now has a lot of money because ETC has gone up and because their donations are dependent on the price of ETC because, because it's a, a portion of the fund at Grayscale. Uh, they, have, they have a lot of money. He's been very austere m managing that money. But he's, the ATC the Cooperative is doing extremely important work that I highlight here uh, in that, that we don't see. It's in the back end. So... So, uh, but it's it, but it's 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 very uh, critical work that they're doing. For example, one the first thing that they're doing is they hired a, a dedicated uh, full-time developer just to maintain Hyperledger Besu. So we have a node which is a very high-quality node uh, that that is is compatible or applied to Ethereum Classic. And it's being maintained by the ETC, maintained and paid by the ETC uh, cooperative. Then, um, the ETC cooperative also is maintaining the 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 blockscout.com uh, ETC Explorer um, blockchain explorer, and that is critical infrastructure as well. All the wallets, all the exchanges, every all, they all direct users to blockscout to check their ETC transactions and and. All the NFT projects are direct you to Block Scout to see your ETC transactions and NFT transactions and token transactions. So it's critical infrastructure, uh, widely used, and this is a project by the ETC Cooperative. The other one is Ether Cluster. Ether Cluster is a system like Infura for for Ethereum. It's basically a, a system that maintains many ETC nodes. And all the wallets, for example, they use those ETC nodes to send uh, transactions and to see uh, the state of, of the blockchain. For example, when, when you go to big wallets like Trust Wallet or MetaMask and, and, you, and you interact with Ethereum Classic by sending transactions or checking your account on MetaMask or Trust Wallet uh, and many other wallets, um, they do it. They, they consult the nodes that ETC Cooperative have, has built and maintains through Ether Cluster. Ether Cluster was um, transferred anyway. The operation, the, te the technical operation was transferred to a private company, but the ETC Cooperative supports that company and that company is the administrator. I don't remember the name. But again, as you can see, uh, the node client 
the block explorer there's many other block explorers but this is the main one used by the whole market worldwide ether cluster node node uh, access and node services these are very important things that etc co-op is doing in the background that we don't talk about every day uh, but we have to value the other thing is that they maintain for a long time etcnodes.org now uh, there's another uh, etc node um, digamos, uh, screen uh, and analytics um, screen that is maintained by etc lab so this project etc nodes was discontinued a few months ago but this was critical infrastructure as well uh, this is i'm going to show now uh, the the node explorer that to which we migrated that is maintained by by um uh, etc lab so you see we have 462 nodes so when this was created etc co-op discontinued that but again uh, it was a very important um project that etc co-op was managing um, Mesari, when our ETC co-op maintains and pays Mesari so that the Ethereum Classic section is in Mesari with updated information, um, so that's that's very important. Mesari is an is a is a research and analytics firm, and and when you go, I'm going to show later another uh, an example of a screen by Mesari, and it's very important for ETC to be there, and ETC co-op um, did this. Then they are supporting Connext, which is a project that will create um, mine, um, trading pools or liquidity pools in, in a swap system like Uniswap. But instead of being dedicated to one blockchain, it's going to be a layer two solution and the liquidity pools are going to be in different blockchains. Uh, this is also excellent for Ethereum Classic. It's, 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 uh, it's a technology that is going to connect Ethereum Classic to the whole ecosystem, which is uh, one of the main um, goals of Ethereum Classic to interact with all the other systems. And liquidity pools are going to exist inside Ethereum Classic uh, because of this system. So this is very important and I think it's very clever for Bob Sommer to support this project. And last but not least, and this is hugely important, is um, the Ketchak 256 hash algorithm project was financed and moved forward by the ETC cooperative. It was it was started by Alex Sankov. He's in a way the ETC Army hero who, who started this uh, EC, ECIP as a proposal to ETC. But the ETC cooperative paid for it and for its completion. And today, uh, not only Hyperledger Base, who has it integrated and operating and it's tested, but um, the, the big node in Ethereum Classic, um, Core Geth, uh, has it already integrated? I, I don't think I don't know if they have tested it and if it's active, but it's there. So so both nodes, whenever the time comes in the future to do the hard fork and migrate to SHA3, um, this is because the ETC cooperative paid uh, for this um, for this project to to go forward. Ketchak 256 is also called known as SHA3, just to to clarify. So the only thing that I would say that if somebody has uh, criticism i have criticisms and well everybody has seen how um sometimes i i criticize the etc co-op and, and bob summer will it's it's that they make they don't make a lot of noise i think that they they should have a, a little budget or something to make more noise and and constantly post positive information about etc um, it, Bob Summerwill has a has a view that ETC has technical challenges, and he's worried with that. And maybe this is also why he's investing a lot in, in in infrastructure, which is amazing. And I think he's right. But that does not mean that you have that you you cannot have positive views about Ethereum Classic, for example. The Ether Plan has explained widely explained uh, all the positive uh, visions and and goals of Ethereum Classic and how it's going to fit in the future. So I think that if, if the ETC cooperative could have a more a higher profile and Bob as well with positive information about not not that does not mean not objective it has to be objective like Etherplan but positive I mean saying explain the virtues of Ethereum Classic as well as the technical challenges that we have explained for example future bloat and stuff like that which are scientific challenges uh, that we have to solve like many other blockchains have 
different scientific uh, challenges. Now the EVM, um, the EVM standard that all, that Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, uh, and, and and other blockchains use has its challenges. One of which is float. So we we all we are all aware of those things. Again, a higher profile for me would be great. Um, but ETC Cooperative, I think, is doing an incredible job. The next topic is uh, okay. The topic of the billionaires. Um, this is this is somewhat amusing, but it, it is important. I think it's important. Um, many I see many people in DC ETCR. I mean, the community. Whenever ETC goes down or whenever it's it's pumping, etc., they immediately start tweeting to to contacting Barry Silbert as as a savior of Ethereum Classic. But now each each blockchain has its own billionaire who's a savior and and and. And whenever they tweet, they they influence the market price, etc. Um, Elon Musk is in Doge, and and, and Michael Saylor in Bitcoin. Um, the thing is that I don't think that we, it it is it it is a correct point of view of way of thinking to always be appealing to a billionaire like Barry in the case of ETC, uh, as if, as if he were a sale a savior. These three coins, coincidentally, Bitcoin, uh, Doge, and ETC are proof-of-work coins. They are meant to be highly secure, and they are meant to be uh, successful and used widely around the world in a secure way, regardless of any person. Again, we don't depend on the social layer. We depend on the technical soundness, and the more people use these chains, the more secure they become, and, and the more indestructible they, they, they become. So a dependence on a billionaire, yes, it's good for marketing, uh, but but I think it's it's um, it's um, it's a little bit of a unicorn kind of way of thinking. A, a cypherpunk way of thinking doesn't depend on anyone specific, not even a developer or DTC cooperative or 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 Barry or Gracie. Oh, he's gonna save us because if not, we're going to die. No, that that's not the truth. The truth is that Ethereum Classic, because of its fundamentals and by itself. Is sustainable and it's going to be extremely um, successful. The next topic is okay. Price predictions. Um, one of my my price prediction was one thousand. My short term price prediction was one thousand by by this Christmas. Um, bueno, evidently, as the day we are December eighteenth, uh, as the days go by, the probability that that's going to happen is diminishing. Um, Crypto is so crazy that it could happen. No, it could happen that Bitcoin goes to 125,000 in the next 10 days, um, and it could happen that Ethereum goes to 10,000 in the next 10 days. But that probability is diminishing as the days these days go by. Um, I think um, this does not change the prediction itself. No, this is a matter of dates. The the 2013 cycle and 2017 cycles we saw that crypto and Bitcoin and, and ETC, etc., um, went up uh, in November, December, and they, and they did the peak of their cycles at that time. We haven't seen yet the peak of our cycle, of the 2021 cycle yet, but it appears that the, the second leg of this cycle and the peak are shifting to, to 2022. Now there's high probability at this point that they're going to shift to 2022. So, so um, that was the, the the fact that Bitcoin, Ethereum, ETC, Doge, etc., were going to peak in November or December was one of the pillars of my of my prediction, and I think it's, that probability is diminishing. So I think that is going to be in the first quarter or first half of 2022. This second leg has not happened. What happened in the last few days is that central banks started to tighten. Uh, the, the the money supply no instead instead of continuing to print the, the the Bank of England the European Central Bank and the Federal Reserve they said that by March or April they're all going to stop printing money and they're going to go tapering their monthly uh, um, quantitative easing uh, and that they're going to start raising rates in the second half of next year something like that so that that has the market flat today this is why ATC is at 35 Bitcoin is at 45 46. Ethereum at 3,800, 3,900. Um, I think that once this uncertainty or, or um, I, I actually think that the central banks provided certainty 
no? because now we know what they're going to do. So, but this this expectation that that we don't know what's going to happen with the tightening and if it's going to 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 flatten the markets is has the markets like this now. But I think that uh, because of all the money that has been already printed, I mean, twenty two trillion dollars in the United States is the, is the monetary N two, uh, and and the balance sheets of the central banks have, are bloated, etc. Even if they, if they diminish the, the printing, the, the stock already printed is going to continue. It's an accelerating velocity. And I think that crypto is going to go up. That's, that's a monetary trend. The other trend is that millennials, Zoomers, institutional investors, middle class uh, people, high class people with their portfolios and financial advisors, financial advisors, banks, etc. They're all going to continue increasing their share of investment in their portfolios um, into crypto, and this is going to impact Bitcoin, Ethereum, and ETC. Uh, so I don't think that that trend is going to change regardless of the monetary uh, policy, uh, short-term monetary policy. Um, and, and also millennials and Zoomers are by default saving in, in, in crypto. So my, my kids, for example, are saving in crypto. They, they, they are switching their mentality. They are, they are in the early 20s. And in a way, it's a generation that they're not thinking immediately, okay, I, I, I made money, I'm going to buy stocks or bonds. No, no, the, the first thing that they think is, of course, I'm going to save in Bitcoin or Ethereum Classic. My kids have Ethereum Classic. Um, so that's what um, millennials and Zoomers are doing, and they're going to increase that. So for all of these reasons, I think that uh, the 1000 price target may not happen until the end of the year but i think it's very likely that it's going to happen the first uh, or first half of, of 20, 2022 the other the other pillar was uh, that ethereum was going to move from ethereum 1 to ethereum 2 and the original projected time were, was more or less by december when well, they moved it six more months so that also um, may have flattened the price action of, of ethereum classic uh, but it's going to happen anyway, um, and I think it's it's there's a likelihood that it's going to happen in the first half of of 2022. So this affirms even more my 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 confidence in my one thousand dollar projection in the short term. Um, so we and and the other thing is that what I explained before is that the the etc halvening, which we call fifthing because it's twenty percent, is going to happen in April. So we have in the first half we have not only a very possible, uh, very likely um, peak, a uh, new peak uh, in, uh, in in this cycle of cri the crypto bull market, we have Ethereum moving and we have the reduction in the supply of ETC, which is algorithmic and it's programmed inside the blockchain. Um, and the third thing is that once once uh, Ethereum, Ethereum moves, this is, this is where I'm going to show Misari, once Ethereum moves, here, here, these are the, the Mesari, the screen of the proof of work coins. And as you can see, the first one is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ethereum Classic. And then we have the rest. So Ethereum Classic is the sixth largest uh, proof of work blockchain in the world and is programmable. And as you see here, uh, only Ethereum 1 is programmable. But Ethereum 1, we already know that it's going to go away. So when this happens, Ethereum is going to be number five, number, uh, yeah, number five, and the market is going to discover, it's going to be more visible, more tangible, that Ethereum Classic compared to Bitcoin, Doge, Litecoin, it's, it's much more useful and programmable, and these guys are not. So why, why use Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash if we have Bitcoin? Uh, but why use Ethereum Classic? It's, it's the same, fixed monetary policy and proof of work. Uh, so why why use Ethereum Classic? Because it's programmable at the base layer, something that these coins are not and will never be. Um, so this this is the the last driver or the last pillar of my projection and why I think it's going to go to a thousand. Um, because Ethereum Classic is going to jump to number two once Ethereum one leaves this this list. Um, so. This is in this chart. Okay, that this has been the base. <clears throat> this is, I think, this is an anomaly, just because market was scared or something like that, an outlier uh, low. 
but I think that 32 then is the base of this long term. This is since May long term channel or consolidation and 77 was the high. I think Ethereum Classic, it may do something like this. I'm crazy day the next few days, uh, but I think it's, it's, it's going to recover. As you can see, this, has, this, is very, this decline is very long. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's due for, for, for green candles from now on. Um, let me see if I have something else. And uh, ah, yes, uh, I wanted to close with this. So my, my predictions are exactly the same. So here, instead of 2022, it's 2020, uh, 20, 2021, it's 2022. But I still think that uh, Bitcoin is going to eventually be the same or surpass the value of gold. Um, and because Ethereum Classic is going to be the second largest blockchain, proof of work block, blockchain known, and programmable, it's going to, uh, its price is going to be in reference to Bitcoin and for several reasons in terms of positioning, network effects and, and how these, these technology markets work. Uh, you, you always have a big one that's going to be Bitcoin and then the second one is usually 50% of the value of the, of the first one. And, and then the, the next one is half of the second and, and like that. And three or four are going to be the big ones and then the rest are going to be insignificant. So because, because ETC is going to be around 50% eventually of the value of, of Bitcoin, it's going to reach a value of $33,000 of $33, uh, by the end of this decade. Uh, and, and the supply is going to be 165, 66 million uh, ETC. But in this cycle, it's, I think it's going to reach around the uh, five or six percent of the value of, of Bitcoin. Um, the supply is going to be 132 million approximately in the next uh, few months. Uh, and this is a price. This is what determines the price of. You can read my article on etherplan.com that explains in detail this. I'm just going very fast over this. So thank you very much. Um, and this is my, my, my video for today where I spoke about community, price predictions and, and different aspects of Ethereum Classic. Bye bye.